And good afternoon, folks. It's Chief Meteorologist Nick Liliga here with your tropical update for September 9th of uh, 2018. Starting things out with a uh, peak at the satellite uh, in uh, the Gulf of Mexico in the Northwest Caribbean. We do have uh, that little cluster down there. And this is something we were talking about yesterday. Uh, I had it zoomed in a little bit closer. I said, okay, so we've got a little area of low pressure here in the mid-levels, and we have a whole bunch of stuff down here. That's going inter to intersect or interact with that, and we're going to end up kind of pulling something over into this area or kind of down into that area. And I didn't think the National Hurricane Center would jump on it this quick, but here they are. Uh, the next two to five days, a, a zero to 20% chance of development uh, as all this stuff kind of drifts off. Uh, to the uh, north and uh, west. This would probably be a bigger issue for Texas and Mexico than for us uh, because the prevailing pattern right now is kind of a, a trough like that and then the flow back around it is that way and so you end up with a situation where whatever's out here is more likely to move northwest and continue that way before getting pulled kind of like that and the overall pattern is going to shift a little bit as we head through the next couple of days too, but as of now, we're still early here, but as of now, I'm not as concerned about this one uh, for South Mississippi, parts of Louisiana, and Alabama. Uh, we go a little further out, we've got uh, Florence, we've got Isaac, and we've got Helene out here, and uh, it's relatively act active across the uh, open Atlantic. Uh, Florence is the first one to talk about, and uh, this is slated to be a Category 4 as it makes landfall somewhere along the east coast between roughly the, uh, right now at least, the Georgia-South Carolina border and, and here I'll, I'll slide this off to the uh, north a little bit, and somewhere between uh, the uh, Chesapeake Bay. And uh, I will say this, and we'll see this here in a couple of seconds, but I always want to remind folks there is an equal chance that it's here as there's an equal chance that it's up here. Uh, that's how the cone works. It's not necessarily where, where is the problem going to be. Oh, they only have to worry about it here to here. No, no, no. The, if the center is here, keep in mind that this uh, system out here, Florence is, we can put a, put a ruler on this real quick. Let me get my little ruler tool out. And uh, this thing is 440 miles wide. So, okay, so let's come over here. 440 miles. Well, that's close enough. And then what we can do is we can lay the center across the center of this 435 mile wide. The center is about right here, which means that the the western and southern edge of the impacts from this are all the way on the Gulf of Mexico side of Florida if it takes the most southerly track. That would include Jacksonville, that would include Gainesville, that would include uh, most of Georgia. Uh, and so uh, don't sleep on this or tell your friends because most of you guys that watch this are in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. But if you've got family and friends in Jacksonville or Gainesville or points nearby in between uh, uh, Savannah, uh, Georgia, let them know. Don't sleep on this. Just because the cones to your north uh, doesn't mean that you may not feel the impacts of this. Now, as we head through the next couple of days, there's going to be some interaction with an area of high pressure up here. Uh, the thought amongst the very smart people that do this um, very well is that by the time, it may take a southerly track here, but by the time it gets a little closer, it may be a little more closer to the more northerly side of this. But as this continues to evolve, I don't want people down here thinking, oh, we're in the clear. Same goes for people up here. We can play that same 440 mile game uh, on the, the northern side of this thing. I'll get my uh, little ruler tool back out here and we can go 440 miles. There, that's close enough. Uh, lay the center right across here and it's about right there and you've got impacts in New York City from this making landfall somewhere in the Chesapeake Bay. So uh, same thing goes. So really the threat, the area of concern for this is still, I would argue, from Jacksonville, Florida to New York City. 
I mean, so it's a Category 4. That's at least what it's slated to be at landfall. This is a, a real deal storm. This isn't something where you say, oh, okay, well, uh, like the storms that we've had here in South Mississippi uh, the last couple of times, uh, whether it's Gordon or Nate, where, oh, yeah, one side, we don't have anything to worry about. It's a tropical storm or a very weak Category 1 hurricane. And this is going to be a Category 4. Uh, a little further out into the Atlantic, we've got Helene out here. Uh, this one's slated to be a Category 2 in the next 72 hours, uh, but this one's going to turn out to see it's going to uh, go north pretty quickly. Uh, currently has uh, wind at 75 miles an hour, gusting to 90. Tropical Storm Isaac um, is an interesting one to watch, um, and this one's still about 1,400 miles off to the east of the Windward Islands, so wind just 70 miles an hour, slated to be a Category 1, probably by the next update. Uh, which for us is coming up uh, in about 45 minutes. Two, I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up a three before getting kind of sheared apart as it moves into the Caribbean. And before you sleep on this one, too, recall that last year Harvey played the same game. It built itself into a tropical storm, then I believe a weak hurricane. It got sheared apart going into the Caribbean. It managed to keep enough of its guts going through the Caribbean that it re-energized on the other side of the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, is that what's going to happen here? I don't think so. Um, no one can know, but I don't think so. I, I don't think we're looking at another Harvey. Um, but it, I just want to make the point that just because you see it go to a Category 2 and then back down to a tropical storm doesn't mean that we don't have anything to worry about this. Uh, I would argue that this one is a greater concern to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama than that little chunk of stuff that's maybe drifting into the Gulf of Mexico as we head through the next uh, couple of days. The good news is, after all of this, we've got a couple more waves out here. We still have this one here, and uh, looks like we maybe have another one kind of back in here. Uh, but that one looks a little bit weaker, and we may start to slow this gravy train down a little bit at least. Uh, in terms of tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa as we head through the next couple of weeks. Uh, so here's Isaac. Here's your spaghetti plots from Isaac uh, getting to the Greater and Lesser Antilles, so say the models, and just look how close these things are together. Uh, I mean, the spread amongst the models here is only 200 miles at, uh, what's that, three days out? That's, that's pretty good uh, in terms of model agreement. Uh, as you get toward Thursday night, you're into the Caribbean, and by the time we get toward uh, next Sunday, you're into the Western Caribbean. And at this point, it looks like we may have a little bit of troughing here, kind of going that direction, uh, which would help keep it from moving toward us. But again, we're still talking a week out. A lot of things are uh, liable to change. Uh, we'll take a look at one deterministic model uh, in terms of what may happen with everything. So we've got, uh, let me pull this up real quick. We've got uh, Florence here, we've got our little bag of something over here, we've got Isaac, we've got Helene, and we've got something up here which is interesting too. Uh, that's not going to bother anybody, it's just a, an, an interesting little piece of energy. So uh, this one slides across the Yucatan, Florence continues making its own weather. Notice how it's surrounded by dry air, and all of this gray stuff is all uh, dry air in here. So that's all dry air surrounding this, but because it's doing such a good job at uh, taking ocean water, evaporating it, and making showers and storms, it's kind of creating its own weather. Uh, as we head through Wednesday and Thursday, here comes Isaac into the Caribbean. Helene starts to move north. That little piece of something I was talking about up here kind of drifts to the south. It's going to end up kind of curlicuing back around here. We may end up with Joyce uh, from one of those waves there. And after moving across the Yucatan, this one kind of falls apart. Uh, move ahead through Saturday. Notice that Isaac here turns into a whole lot of nothing. That little thing kind of spins into something. There's Helene, question mark, Joyce here, not really holding together. The maybe less fascinating but bigger impact on our weather locally event that may happen is, see all this dry air that gets pushed down? Uh, this would be cooler Canadian fallish air getting slammed into parts of uh, the south. Uh, that may mean a break from real deal summertime heat as we get toward the middle to end of September. Yeah, it's probably still going to be in the 80s in the afternoon, but uh, the overnight lows may uh, fall all the way down into the oh, 
60s. Uh, we end up with a little spin up here. Not quite sure what this is. I think it's the model just uh, digesting some interesting data. Uh, and then this is by Tuesday, uh, September 18th. We get some more dry air out here. Things start to calm down a little bit and we can all take a collective breath after uh, things really heating up in the tropics. So there's a look at your tropical update brought to you by the good folks at